I've been asked probably hundreds of times what my keybinds are and what sort of mouse sensitivity settings I have. So today we're going to go through all of my settings so that you can improve your aim and movement and ultimately have more fun in multiplayer and Warzone 2 when it drops in a couple weeks. We will also be covering keyboard size and why you may need to downsize a little bit because it can affect your sensitivity and ultimately aim. Now before we get started, we will be covering topics like aiming and movement and posture tips in future videos. So if you're also interested in that, double check to make sure you are subscribed with the bell turned on. Now, let's get started with keybinds. I do currently have my crouch set to toggle as well as prone. I have automatic tack sprint. This is huge for movement so that you're able to get out of corners very quickly, as well as dolphin dive very efficiently. Tactical sprint behavior, I have it to single tap, meaning I just press W or shift and it automatically works. And automatic airborne mantle, I have set to partial and slide share dive inputs set to independent. You can go into your movement advanced settings, and this previously is where people were able to figure out a way to slide cancel, but so far I haven't really changed too much of this stuff here. Walk speed I do have sets to slow, that's more for like cinematic type of walkthroughs though. The rest of this stuff, if I remember correctly, is all just set to default. For combat behaviors, aim down sight, I have that set to hold. A uh, long time ago I used to play on toggle, but hold actually makes your ADS slightly faster, so uh, Call of Duty has always been a hold ADS type of game, so that's just where I have mine at. Uh, change zoom shared input, I have the sprint tactical sprint focus. Equipment behavior is set to hold, interact is set to press. Weapon mount activation is set to toggle. And armor plate behavior, make sure to change this to apply all. Now if we go to our combat advanced settings, I don't think I've changed any of this stuff. So um, yeah, that's just what I have. Um, I don't really think you really need to change any of this really that much. As far as our vehicle behaviors, I don't think I've really changed any of this stuff. Um, yeah, long delay, always enabled uh, behind vehicle. Um, overlay behavior, we can kind of go through here. Uh, oh, this is for the backpack stuff. Again, they don't have this really that much in the game, except for maybe in Spec Ops. But um, yeah, I'm not, I probably change this stuff once Warzone 2 drops. But for right now, this is just where we're at. As far as danger ping, I just have that set to double tap. So I'm using the same ping, but tapping it twice and uh, I don't have any of these delays changed any. For keybinds, I'm just going to kind of scroll through right here. So this is the first page. As you can see, I do have uh, prone changed to Z. I know that, you know, that's different, but this is back in my PUBG days. I, I used to play in uh, a lot of that. So Z is just kind of what I've remembered from that. And uh, I've just kind of carried that across every single FPS game I've played since. Let's go to the next page. Uh, we'll go to movement advanced keybinds here and you can see oh, my auto move forward. This is like if I just want to move forward and you know take a bite of food or something. I have this set to plus or equals and then uh, everything else right here and control is for walk. You can change these here if you really want to. But uh, again, uh, most of this stuff is just going to be default. I haven't really changed anything here. And then if we scroll down to the combat keybinds. This is all pretty standard. Reload is R. I have next weapon set to two. And so that way I don't accidentally bump my scroll wheel and switch my weapon. That is something I would highly recommend doing is set your switch weapons to a number one or a number two or a number three, something like that. You may have to change some other key binds once you do that, but it is worth it. Weapon mount I have set to the forward mouse button. Mail I have set to the back mouse button. Lethal equipment, that's going to be like your grenade. I have that set to G. Your tactical equipment, that's going to be your shock sticks or your stuns or your flashes, it's Q. Field upgrade for me is X. Just be careful because you may try to go prone. And if you button mash, then yeah, you may want to change that. And armor plate is going to be set to four. Once you set this, you're going to have to change your kill streaks to five, six, seven, eight, etc. Weapon inspect I have set to I. Alternative fire I have set to B. That changes your weapon from single to burst to full. Previous weapon I have set to one, so one and two to switch all the weapons. Conceal weapon, this is mostly for campaign, but maybe we're going to be using this more in DMZ later. If you kind of scroll down right here, I don't really think I've changed too much of this stuff. Uh, actually, uh, I might have changed mission ability and everything because I have four set to uh, plate. So yeah, I think these ones, again, five, six, seven, eight, etc., etc. If we scroll down to uh, vehicle keybinds, I haven't really changed anything here that I can remember. Um, I don't really drive too many vehicles. I just kind of run around and blast things. But uh, yeah, um, obviously change this to how you prefer, but I don't really use this, so it doesn't really uh, matter too much for me. I've never changed any of these settings since Warzone, so I don't recommend changing them.
As far as overlays, tab is for anything like scores. Uh, map is going to be M. Ping is E for me. And so double tap E is for enemy. Ping wheels alt. This is going to be for like if you don't have a microphone. Uh, danger ping. I have that unbound because it's set to, to the double tap. And then for your loadouts, you can have these set or hot keyed to a number. Backpack, of course, is tab. I haven't touched anything here yet, but I'm sure I will here once Warzone 2 comes out with DMZ. As far as your uh, menu stuff, I haven't changed any of these except for, I believe, uh, push to talk I have set to T, but uh, I don't really normally do that because I just play the game. I don't really like talking smack. As far as your menu advanced key binds, I haven't changed anything here. I'd love to give a massive shout out to our partners over at Private Internet Access. They are a gaming VPN company that can help you in some cases lower your ping while gaming. And for when you like to chill out and relax, you can watch any sort of shows, movies that may be geo restricted in your area. For example, if you live in the States and you want to watch anime in Japan, it's literally one click. Or if you live internationally or are traveling, and want to watch stuff that you're used to in the States or wherever your home country is, that also just takes one click. They have servers in over 70 countries and in every single one of the United States, all 50. And using my code, it gives you the biggest discount that they have. It's literally two bucks a month for technology that Fortune 500 companies use. So if you're interested, please go check them out at piavpn.com slash thin. And no, it's not going to get you bot lobbies. Now, these are all the settings that I have in Logitech for my G Pro X Superlight and this keyboard. If you're interested in picking one up for yourself, the links are down in the description. If we click in here, you can see my primary DPI is 1200. Now it is better to play at a higher DPI because your DPI is basically the resolution of your mouse's sensor. At 1200 to 1600 DPI, or kind of the sweet spot, your mouse will have a much clearer picture as you move it around so that it doesn't skip any areas or have any dead zones. According to many industry pros, as well as mice manufacturers, it's much better to play at a higher DPI and lower in-game sense, just so long as your in-game sense can go low enough. So my mouse sensitivity is currently 1200 and in-game sense is currently 2.95, but I'll be trying out 1600. And if I switch to that, I'll make sure to pin an update in the comment section below. I don't have any sort of multiplier for anything because you want to have a one-to-one -one ratio as you move your mouse. And this one I just have set to default. This one, of course, is also set to a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, sensitivity type is relative. I have never really changed this. And monitor distance coefficient, I have never changed this as well. This is the default setting. You can also have a custom sensitivity per zoom if you snipe a whole lot, but I've played this game now for years and I've just gotten used to it. Now, obviously, if you like to play inverted, you can have, uh, you know, your vertical aim axis inverted, but that's just weird and I'm personally not a pilot, so I don't need to do that. And I've never done any sort of acceleration filtering, smoothing, any of this type of stuff here because I much rather have Logitech do it on board on the hardware itself rather than rather than it being done in game and having that be another layer if you play on a full-size keyboard you may want to consider a 10 keyless or in this case a 60 i think this is a 60 percent because when you play at a lower sensitivity to have better aim you're probably going to start running out of room because you're going to be smacking your mouse on your keyboard on your inward sweep. Now, I do have some recommended keyboards in my Amazon store. The link for that is down below. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on a keyboard. The one that I just showed you that I use for traveling costs around $40. If you found anything helpful in this video, please consider sharing this with your squad mate. And even if you're a controller player and watch this all the way through, Send this to your friends who play on keyboard and mouse. We got a whole bunch more content planned on the road to Warzone 2. So double check and make sure you are subscribed with notifications turned on.